What's up guys, Ryan here. Um, I want to show you a cool feature in Logic to get bigger chords, different chord progressions, just to up your chord game. Let's go. Here we go. So I think if you pick whatever sound you're looking for, um, I'm just going to open up Serum and just pick a random sound. I got a really simple sound on Serum, which is just doing a little kind of plucky thing. Um, so if we head over to the MIDI effects, and we've got lots of options here. So these MIDI effects, what they basically do is they can manipulate the MIDI before it hits the synth. So we're working our way up to down on Logic Pro. So the first thing that's going to happen is the MIDI effects, which means that if I put an arpeggiator on and I hold a chord, it's going to arpeggiate but this is the one here we're going to look at chord trigger and this thing is amazing because i am bang average at keyboard i can only play in c major a few chords this has really saved my butt a few times when i've been doing some production so as you can see on the interface here we've got the trigger keys at the top and we've got the output so we've got the input and the output so the input is what we're going to do on our keyboard and the output is what the plugin is going to do so if I push C right now, I don't have anything set up, so I'll push this C and nothing's going to happen. So what I want to do is I want to push learn and I'm going to push this C that I was just pressing and I want this C to trigger the first chord. So I'm going to put in the first notes of C major. So we have the first chord of C major here, C, E, and G. We're just going to do this throughout the key of C major. So we're going to take the lowest bass note, and then we're going to skip a note, and then we're going to add the next one. So we'll go to the next chord, untick learn, and I push learn again, and now hit the D key, and I want this to be D minor. The E key for E minor, F for F major. G major, A minor, and then B diminished. So we can see that I'm just playing a C on my keyboard. I'm playing what you can see up the top and it's triggering what's happening down the bottom. So why is this good? Because I can now play chord progressions a bit smoother and easier. Okay, how do we make these chords more interesting and how do we make them sound great in our song? Let's expand on the chords, let's expand on the harmony. So we'll go back to our first chord, C major, and we'll add a bass note. And we can add any of the extra notes in C major and it's going to give a little bit of a different flavor to the chord. So I love the sound of sus chords or using the ninth in the key, which would be D. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It would be the second up an octave. So I'll put that D up there. And then let's listen to this chord now. I'm just gonna put the note repeat on so we can hear it over and over. Okay, I think we can add a little bit more to this chord. So let's see. I'm gonna add the fifth lower down, which is the G. And that's gonna thicken up the lower end of the chord. Okay, let's go to the next chord. And it's you can hear how it's thin compared to the last chord. So let's add that bass note. Um, maybe even a lower bass note. And we can add the fifth of D, which is A. And then let's make it a bit more spicy. So we'll add a C, which is the flat seven. It's gonna turn it into a D minor seven chord. Let's have a listen to that. Cool, and now the third chord, E minor. It's very thin at the moment, so let's add a bass note, another bass note, the fifth of E, which is a B, to thicken it up. And if we add a D on the top of this, it's gonna make it an E minor seven. Um, let's see what else we can squeeze in. Maybe we could put another E at the top, so it's a bit crunchier sounding with the two notes together. Cool. And now when I get back to that C, I'm missing the low bass note that the other chords have. So I'm going to add that low bass note. 
Okay, the fourth card, F major. Let's see what we got. Simple F major chord, bass note, another bass note, the fifth C. Um, let's make it an add nine also. So we'll add the ninth of F, which is G. And then we can put the G in there too. There we go. Let's have a listen to that. Cool. And then let's keep going. So we've got G, the fifth chord of the scale. I'm going to add lower bass note, even lower bass note. I think we can go even lower there. In fact, maybe, uh, yeah, let's keep it. Fifth, fifth. And then what do we want to spice up with? Should we do an F? Because this is actually a G7 chord. Have a listen to that. Cool. The sixth chord, A minor. Bass note. Bass note. Fifth. The flat seventh. Wonder what it would sound like with the D. Hmm. And then put the flat seven on the top. And I'm going to ignore the seventh chord, actually, because I'm not going to use a B diminished. So let's have a listen to this. I'm just going to open up Serum and just move around with the cutoff so I can get an idea of how it sounds when I'm making it a bit more exciting. Let's get a little bit more reverb on there. Cool. One last feature which is really cool on the chord trigger is that we can transpose the chords. So we're in the key of C at the moment, which is pretty much the only key I can play semi-fluently on the piano. But I can move to the key of B, so I'm still going to play a C on the keyboard. And then I'll play a B major now. B flat, A, and so forth. So if I move it down to a random one, we can just change the key instantly with this. Oof. That G is a little bit too spicy for me. So I'll take out that flat seven. Where is it? This one here. There we go. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, please leave a comment, uh, ask me any questions, whatever. Subscribe, that would be awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.